Well, I uh, was in touch with Tina Brown, Harry's wife, uh, last weekend, and she uh, told me that um, Harry was um, sinking, rather, and so I was kind of braced for the news. It still is a great shock. Uh, he was uh, as unlike a 92-year-old as you can imagine a man to be. He was like someone 30 years older. He had a kind of Peter Pan youth about him and vigour. Uh, he was a man of great charm uh, and energy uh, and enthusiasm. He was a force of nature and a, a force of life. So when someone like that dies, it, it always is a big shock. And um, the world seems a little bit greyer and a little bit sadder without Harry in it tonight. I, I agree with you. I had the opportunity to know him, to interview him several times alongside Tina Brown. Uh, both of them were a, a, a major you know, in the vernacular power couple, but a real force for, for transformative change um, in their careers. You wrote that a world without Harry Evans will be a more boring world. Let's just also talk about his journalistic legacy, because he was terribly young. I mean, he, he left school at 16, and he managed to climb the ladder of first uh, regional newspaper, and then the Sunday Times, and then the Times. I mean, the most illustrious newspapers, certainly in this part of the world uh, at the time. Give us a sense of what drove him, what, what created this, this legend. Well, I think you <clears throat> put your finger on it there. He left school at 16 and started work uh, during the Second World War, uh, just on ordinary local papers, covering all the boring, extraordinary things that go on in a small town, you know, the courtroom, the cake stall, um, you know, the pub. Uh, and he got a grounding in ordinary life and in journalism. Then he did his national service. Uh, then, then he managed to get to Durham University, uh, and that really probably was the, was the start of things for him, opening up new horizons. He won a Harkness scholarship, and so was able to travel to America in the 1950s. And that began a real love affair with America. He loved, he absolutely loved the United States and an interest in campaigning journalism because he was covering the early civil rights days. And when he returned to the north of England, he started as a young editor of a paper and he was a campaigning local newspaper editor of a, of a sort that perhaps is more familiar in the United States or was uh, than here. Uh, and he came to the attention of Fleet Street in London and in 1967, when he was still uh, only in his 30s, he landed what is probably the biggest job in British journalism, which is the editorship of the Sunday Times. And uh, he brought that dynamism and that outsider-insider quality, uh, which made him so formidable, I think.